So here's the little steam raising blower that um, I've been making. Here was the here's the original plastic fan blade. Now this came out of a hot air gun, and so did this motor. This came out of a hot air gun as well. Um, the gun broke, for the heating element broke, so I've recovered these parts. Um, obviously, as it's going to go on a boiler, I needed an aluminium fan, so I've made up a little aluminium fan that I've machined on the lathe and then indexed on the milling machine and cut these radial blades. So that's a centrifugal fan. And then we have a casing for this fan. So the casing for the fan goes on. I'll take you through this as we build it. Two little screws in the back there. Little bolts go in. And they, oops, got a magnetic screwdriver. I thought it might maybe it. that's a good thing to use. So those little bolts go in there. Fix the housing. Fix the housing onto the motor. Same with this one. So two M two point five, so two point five millimeter metric threads. So that's my housing with holes around the outside here. This is where the air and the exhaust gas has come out of. Next, the fan goes on the little brass shaft that I fitted onto the motor. Now, uh, what we have to do is just put a piece of metal, or in this case an Allen key, in through that side there, and that just locks the fan against the case. I then put a washer on top of that, and then a bolt on. Oops, I've locked, dropped my uh, Allen key. Let me just tighten that up. Just like, let's put the Allen key back in. Get the Allen key. So the Allen key goes, as I said, in through the fan. And I can just tighten that up. It doesn't have to be terribly tight, but it's tight enough. Okay. And then over the outside, I've got the, the outer part, the nozzle part of the case. So you can see this has got quite a big hole this end where it fits over the fan. The air goes in the centre of the fan. As it's spinning, the air gets accelerated out radially and comes out through these holes. Um, and this little pipe then fits into the chimney of the of the boiler, as you'll see. Now, on this, to make sure that I get the, this all aligned correctly, I've got a little centre punch mark on the case, and I've got a little centre punch mark on this lid, and the two line up. That means I've got these three holes there, these three holes that have been tapped again for M2.5 bolts. They go in. Again, they're Phillips. Some of these bolts aren't that great when they're Allen key heads because they tend to, or they can be a little bit soft, some of these bolts. As I find the Phillips ones are okay. So let's just do those up. Put that up there. And then I've got a power supply, a bench power supply here. If I just connect the leads out, I'll just crop clip them onto there. Positive, negative. I've set it at 5.5 volts. It's making quite a whistle. The whistle's due to the fact that I've got 18 holes in the side here and nine holes radial fan blades. Uh, I should have I should have made that an odd number, a different number to the number of blades, but that's alright. Um, I can modify that by, by closing off a few of these holes and it makes the sound a lot better. Um, what you can hear now, you can there is only a slight suction, but there's a suction on that. You can hear it change when I put my finger over it, the load comes off. Actually, the current on there drops, you can see there, to 0.38 of an amp. When I let the air back in, the current increases again to 0.45 amps. Now, here's the boiler. And what we get is when we put this... This goes on the top of the boiler, on the very top of the chimney. And we get an airflow through, with air being pulled through there. Nice and simple. We can change the speed of the fan. It's operating down at 2.5 volts. And it will operate 
That's up at 12 volts. I'm not sure I want to run it at 12 volts for very long. Um, I think that's okay for just a short time. There you are. And there it is. So that's that's the blower raising fan. My alternative steam raising uh, device is a piece of 1 16th copper tube bent with a hook shape on the end here, a hockey stick shape on the end here and then with a, a slightly bigger inlet here to accept a piece of uh, a silicon tube from a, a very small air compressor which is in this little box here. So it's a little 12 volt seat pump, um, supplies around about uh, 10 psi of air fairly low volume but if i put that onto this pipe here onto there that's i can then turn it on hear the compressor i'll put the compressor down on the floor out the way a bit quieter but now you can see i've got a small pipe being supplied with compressed air and I'm getting a jet of compressed air. Now, if I take that jet of compressed air and put it into a pipe, what I get is a, a quite a distinct, and it's quite interesting, the flow here is reasonable but low, but if I put it into here, what I get then is that compressed air at high velocity is a lower pressure in that pipe and the low pressure pulls through the air high pressure in the in the firebox at the bottom here and this is where the burner will go so the burner goes in the firebox here at the bottom this will be a light this will be filled with methylated spirits and that will pull the air through and effectively give air more, more air for my fuel here which means I'll get more heat out of the burner and the boiler will heat up more quickly. Especially important at the start when I'm trying to get heat into the system. So that's a very simple, and I can control that by just nipping the pipe. So if I nip the pipe, I can change the actual flow of air quite well. Nice and simple, because it just it doesn't change the top of the, you know, there's no, there's no electric motor to get hot. It's just a simple piece of copper wire and a bit of silicon that will withstand the temperature quite easily. I can leave it in there. I can pull it out easily. Um, I can also run this air compressor off 12 volts. So it's very much like the blower fan. It will operate very simply and, and it pulls a lot of air through. What we see here is a temperature versus time graph for the, the boiler um, and I've independently tested the two different blowers, so the compressed air blower and the fan blower and the arrows show the switch on point for each device and you can see that there's a, a very rapid increase of the temperature of the boiler when I switch these blowers on. In the second graph you'll see that actually when I switch these off briefly, these, these blowers, I get a much slower increase in the temperature of the boiler and when I switch them back on I get an increase right up to the the point at which the safety valve goes indicated by the arrows on this graph. Now if I model this boiler um, and you'll see in this heat input versus time graph I can I can work out how much heat I'm, I, the, the boiler is gaining uh, effectively an input so it's an input power uh, in watts. Now what you can see is when the fan or the compressed air is switched on I increase the heat input to the boiler to something of between 250 and 350 watts uh, and that is it increases over time but then when I switch these off that drops back to a fairly steady in both cases 50 watts of heat input. And you can see that there. So when in that in that next graph, you can see that that 50 watts is fairly steady. It drops off a bit low, slower with the fan as the fan ramps down in speed. It takes a bit of time, and therefore there's a little bit of slower decrease in the in the heat at, 
uh, input into the boiler. And the range of that heat, I'm seeing 50 watts without the actual blowers on and then 350 watts with the blowers on.